So counting exercises are easy when you ask the correct sequence of questions. As a simple poker example, in order to answer in how many different ways can you get a full house hand, uh, this is the sequence of questions. First, what cards do I have three of? And in my example, that's going to be a nine. Then you ask what card you have two of. In my example is a king. But the example is not finished until you also have the suits of the cards. So what are the suits of the three nines? And also what are the suits of the two kings? This is when you stop asking questions, when your example is completed. But now what is the answer to the question? And how many different ways could I have done this? And the answers to each of the questions are irrelevant. What's going to be relevant is the number of possible choices that I had for each one. So over here, when I chose the nine, I had 13 different possibilities for that answer, which is the number of types of cards that you have in a deck. But when I said that the second type of card was going to be a king, I had 12 different answers for that question, because now it couldn't be a nine anymore. And when I asked the suits of the three nines, well, there are four suits, so I have to choose three of those, four choose three, which happens to be the number four. And out of the four suits, I also have to choose two suits for the suits of the kings. Four choose two is six. And the final answer to the problem, you're going to multiply all of these numbers that are the amounts of different possible answers to each of the questions that you asked. So 13 times 12 times 4 times 6. Which leads us to the next question. Uh, how do you choose the questions? Because most people don't feel like they are creative enough to come up with the correct sequence of questions. But the thing is that this is not about creativity. This is about how you draw the examples. A lot of people feel that since they are not creative, then they're always going to ask, what is the first card? What is the second card? What is the third card? And I've gone over this in another video before why that is a bad choice. But it's not always a bad choice. It depends on the example. So if I wanted to just make eight digit numbers with no restrictions, not even that restriction where the number can't begin with zero, let's say that it can. But there are no restrictions. So in this case, it is okay to ask the questions, what is the first number? What is the second number? I know that I wrote card there instead of number, but that's because I had the other example in my mind. Uh, so I chose a seven and a six for the first and the second digits, but that's not what is important. What is important is how many different choices did I have? And I had 10 different choices for both. A lot of times problems that are similar to this one will end up being a factorial. So it's going to be 10 choices, nine choices, and so on. But not this one, because there is no restriction, so you can repeat a number that came before. Like, for example, the third number is allowed to be a 7 again. There were 10 possibilities for that, and there's going to be 10 possibilities for the other digits as well. In the end, you're going to multiply all the green numbers, and the answer is going to be 10 to the power of 8. That's the number of different 8-digit numbers that you can make with no restrictions. But the thing is that, remember I told you this is not about creativity. It is about how you draw the example. And for an eight-digit number with no restrictions, this is how you write down an example. You go from left to right, and then you just put random numbers in there. But when I start giving you restrictions, you build the examples differently. And in order to show you how this is not about creativity, but rather about what the question is naturally asking you to do, I have asked two children to do this, and let's see how they did it. I encourage you to pick up a paper and a pen so that you can also build your own examples as the children are building theirs, and see if you're going to behave in the same way that they do. So they're going to do two things. The first one is going to be exactly what we were just talking about, eight-digit numbers with no restrictions. And then the second one is going to be this more complicated one. It's still an eight-digit number, but now there are restrictions. I need three of the same, another three of the same, and then one and one that are all different. We're going to build eight digit numbers by putting the squares into the holes. And I want you to do it twice. The first time you're going to do the least creative example that you can think of. And then the second time I want you to make a creative example. Get out of your head, make a better life instead. You gotta give it all your best. So put your hands up to the sky and live your best life. All right, don't just let it go by. Just try. Oh my, got only one life, got only this time. 
We gonna get it right. You gotta let go of those who don't. And let's make a better example, a more creative one. You gotta work till you're winning. Yeah, take control of the system. When you invest, it's addicting. No time to rest, let's go get it. Not gonna stop till I'm finished. Not gonna drop to my limits. Deep in my chest, I'm inhaling. Believe in testing and failing. You gotta flip everything in your mind. Take the limit and that's Okay, so for the next numbers, there's actually a restriction. It can't be any number that you want. So pay attention to the restrictions. Three of the digits have to be the same number. Then another three of the digits also have to be the same number, but a different one than the first one. And the final two numbers have to be completely different from the other six. Uh, I want you to do the not creative example first. And then after that, we're going to do a creative one. Never gonna stop, no way, no. Yelling out, hey, yo. Headed to the top, no way, yo. You gotta make change. Yeah, there's gonna be a little pain. But nothing's worse than staying the same. So light that flame. Put the work in, go claim. Everything you want in this place. It's time to go fast. Just so you know, the digits that are the same don't have to be together, okay? No slack, headed to the top. They don't have to be together, okay? Gonna stop, no, you got this, never go back. I know it gets hard, you gotta love it. You gotta recharge with what you want and think of your dreams, get that energy to go and get everything. You gotta take control, whoa, whoa. life's too short, whoa, whoa. get out of your It's interesting how both children misinterpreted the question initially in exactly the same way. And this is probably a mistake on my part on how I was asking them the question. Both of them assumed that the three equal digits needed to stay together and then I corrected them. But after that, they did not build their numbers from the left to the right. If you were not paying attention to that in the video, you can scroll back a little bit and see in what order they put the numbers into there. It was not from the left to the right. And I hope that's how you did it too, but there is a difference because you were holding a pen on paper and we do tend to write from the left to the right. The children had an advantage because they had little cards and the spaces for the digits were laid out in front of them. So what they did was not to go from the left to the right. First of all, they chose which number they were going to repeat three times. They picked up three cards of that number and then they put them somewhere. So those are the two questions that you should begin by asking. What number will I repeat and where will I put them? I'm building a different example. Here is not the same one as the children did, but I chose a five and I chose fourth, fifth and eighth positions. But that's not the most relevant part. The most relevant part is how many options did I have? For what number to be repeated? I had 10 possible choices and for the three places, well, there are eight places and I am choosing three of them. So that is eight, choose three, which is 56. And then just like the children did in the video, I am going to pick another number. I'm going to pick the number seven and I chose these three positions for the number seven. Now for seven, I had nine possible choices because I couldn't pick the five again. And then for the three positions, I had still five positions left after picking the first three. So that was five positions to choose three out of. Five choose three is 10. And you see, I can't stop yet because my example is not finished. And the children in the video hadn't stopped either. They went ahead and they picked two more numbers. I'm going to choose them one at a time. First, I'm choosing what number is going to go on the first empty space, which is this one. I'm choosing the number three, but I had eight possibilities. And finally, I chose the number two for the final empty space. I had seven possibilities for that. So now I have to ask, in how many different ways could this have been done is multiplying all of the green numbers? And the answer is this large number here. But this problem is not quite over yet because there was some overcounting that happened. Not every problem of this type with repeated digits is always going to result in overcounting, but this one did. And the problem was that it was three of a kind and three as well of a different kind. So I chose five and seven, but in a different example, somebody might have chosen seven and five. That would have resulted in the same example in the end, but the example would have been built in a different way. 
I can show you that with the children's examples where I am going to be building the same examples as they are, but I'm going to be doing it in a different order. You gotta take control, life's too short, get out of your head, make a better life instead, you gotta give it all your best, so put your hands up to the sky and live your best life, all right. Why does that result in overcounting though? The thing is that the number that we get here, uh, which is a multiplication of all the choices that happened along the way, this is not really counting the number of final answers. This is counting the number of stories that have been told. And as we've seen in the children's examples, there are always two different stories that result in the same final answer. So every example has been counted twice. So you have to divide by two in the end. The thing is that uh, the question originally was not to count the stories. The question was to count the numbers. But the way that we count them is not by counting them directly. We count how many numbers there are by counting the number of stories that lead to the numbers. This is the way to do it because the stories can be broken apart into independent pieces. The number itself can't always be broken apart because then it would be first digit, second digit, third digit. That doesn't always work. So we count the stories instead. Instead of counting the places where we want to get, we count the number of ways to get there. And sometimes, like in this case, there are always two different ways to get to each of the final results. That's exactly what overcounting is. So you divide by two in the end.